Hey, what's up everybody? Chad here from grayscalegorilla.com. I recently watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and was completely blown away by that movie. The shading, the lighting, the, the techniques with halftone patterns and whatnot just really blew me away. So when I got home, I immediately started thinking of ways I could emulate shaders like this in my work. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a very Spider-Verse looking material in Arnold for Cinema 4D with some cool halftone patterns and cross hatching. Let's dive in. Okay, so before we jump into how I created the halftone Spider-Verse looking shader here, we need to start with some reference. And I always use uh, Pure Ref when I'm putting together reference. And I've got some reference here. I'm just gonna hold down uh, the Z button and my left mouse button, and we're just gonna look at some of the reference imagery here. This movie was so freaking fantastic. But the whole time I was watching it, I was just completely blown away by the shading that they chose to do and where they choose, chose to do it and how they, how they did highlights, mid-tones, shadows, that sort of thing. And it was very interesting, and I, I just thought it was so inspirational that I wanted to come back and try to make a shader like that myself. Uh, one of the characters that I really loved was Kingpin. Kingpin uh, had this great highlight that would always go on his shoulder that had this uh, halftone pattern that I was like, oh man, that's great. And then in uh, Spider-Man, sort of the, the, drunk, <laughs> the drunk loser Spider-Man had uh, a great highlight halftone as well, but he also had like a mid-tone halftone, and then he had some cross-hatching and some other shots. This one has some of the great uh, halftone patterns happening in the highlights and in the mid-tones here as well. Uh, and then this one, there's not a whole lot of it in this shot, but you can sort of see some of these cross-hatch patterns coming in, which I thought was really interesting. So I wanted to figure out if I could build this in uh, in Arnold. So I went ahead and I made this shader. Let's just go ahead and like get out of this camera for a minute so you can sort of see what's going on. Um, it is going to be camera dependent because I am doing some camera projections here, but I just wanted to move the camera around just a little bit so you could see what's going on. We have um, a, a pretty pretty interesting shader here, and I'm going to start you. We're going to do a quick tour of this shader, and then I'm going to break out a new shader, and we're going to build this from scratch. All right, what do we have here, first of all? First of all, the very left-hand side of our tree, I'm just gonna isolate that. We have what's driving this entire shader, which is going to be a Lambert utility, a utility, an Arnold utility set in shade mode to Lambert. What this is gonna do is it's gonna give us a zero to one value on the shading. Let's jump back out to our camera. It's a little bit easier to see here. So what is that doing? That's giving me everywhere that it's, it's it's hitting light, it's turning white, and everywhere it's in shadow, it's, it'll turn black. It's pretty self-explanatory. But what this does is it gives us a value, a value from light to dark on the model, right? And we're going to use that to drive a lot of things that we're going to make. So what is this going out to? Well, this very top row right here, this is my highlight section. I, I decided, you know, after looking at the reference, a lot of cool reference, I decided that I wanted to make a shader that had a mid-tone, half-tone pattern, a shadow halftone pattern, and then also a uh, a mid-tone uh, halftone pattern. But the, I think the shadow pattern, I ended up doing like a crosshatch thing, so it's not really a halftone pattern, I guess, but we'll go ahead and take a look at that in a minute. All right, so let's just keep rolling here. Let's go to our first ramp. So I'm taking this utility node, and I'm mat putting it out to a ramp, and you can see that I've got this ramp pretty heavily clamped. Now, obviously, this is so I can add a highlight halftone. This is what's going to be used to drive that, right? In fact, I've got another one split out here. This is the mask for that area. And you may notice that it looks not quite white here. It's because I've got a lookup table on top of this uh, render view here. So if I turn this off on the IPR, you can see it without it. I'm going to add it, leave it in there. I like the way it looks. It's also one of our uh, GSG LUTs. Uh, so from there, I'm using that clamped uh, utility the, the Lambert, and I'm setting a range to it. I'm setting a range of 0.1 to 1. And then that range, this is where it's going to get kind of tricky here. I'll, I'm not going to get too heavy into this because I'm going to show you how to build it from scratch in a minute. So that range is driving the position of another ramp that's set to circular. Now it's driving the position of the second knot. So you can see here, this ramp is going to say, okay, I want the circle to be really tiny, or I want the circle to be really big. 
okay? Then it goes through a UV transform node, and this is the magic sauce of getting the uh, the halftone pattern working in Arnold, is using the UV transform node, setting this ramp to go pass through, and what it's doing is it's taking that single circle that it made right here, and it's gonna repeat it 100 times in uh, Y and 100 t 200 times in X, okay? From there, I'm rotating it about 40, 45 degrees, 42 degrees in this case, to get that halftone look. So if I go ahead and isolate this now, it's going to look really weird. It doesn't, it's not mapping correctly. It's sort of like all over the place. In fact, it's using the UV space of the model, which is not what I want. I need the, I need to project this through a camera space so it appears that the, the dot patterns are being projected from the camera. It looks a little bit more like what you would consider like a comic book or a print sort of style. So if we break out of the camera here and we jump in here, you can see it's doing what we want. And I'm going to explain some of this other stuff in a minute, but it's not projected right. So it goes all the way out to a camera projection node, which then takes it through our camera that we're looking through and says, okay, now it looks more like a halftone pattern. Now we're getting the dots projected from the camera from the straight on point of view. We've got the bigger dots on the highlights and the tinier dots on the little parts. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to go a little bit more into detail about how this works. So that's all all these little halftone patterns. Let's take a look at the midtone. Midtone's doing this. And let's make this bigger so we can see it a little bit better. Go like 90. Oops. Let's go like 90%. And then I'm going to just draw a region. I'm holding down shift. Just region over this. Let's go a little bit bigger. Let's go 110. All right, there we go. Uh, okay, so now let's look at our at our shadow portion of this of this material. So Let's go ahead and isolate that. And you can see this is like a crosshatch pattern. Um, so what the heck is going on? Like, how are we doing this? Well, these mats are then going to be put into a layer RGB node, which has all the different colors associated with my highlights and my midtones and my shadows. And these mats are just going to reveal those colors. So it becomes a lot like Photoshop in that case, where you're just setting things to, uh, you know, some of these, I believe. Actually, I don't think any of them are set to multiply. Uh, this one's set to overlay, but the highlight is set to add and, and just things like you would achieve in, in regular comping or in Photoshop. And of course, let's go ahead and look at the output of just this texture. This has no shading on it at all. That's one thing that's interesting about Spider-Verse is that they, they maintained a lot of that three-dimensional shading. It's not completely tune shaded or flat. So this is just my, uh, my texture that gets put into a standard surface shader and then output where we have a slight bit of spec, and now we're seeing all the shading in there as well. And that's really what's, what makes this thing feel like it's from uh, the Spider-Verse is because it's got that mixture, which I really thought was c really creative and interesting. Um, so on top of that, we've got our, we do have, let's go ahead and look at the image that, so this mask, which I made this in Illustrator and brought it in, and uh, this is creating our mask for our webbing, and then the actual red texture, the red color is in this layered shader as well. And then our C4D noise, I just threw like a, a Luca noise on there to basically break up that that paint pattern or that texture map of the uh, of the uh, webbing so that it looks a little bit more hand-drawn, a little bit more messy, uh, which is something that I really liked about the movie as well. All right, so we go all the way out here to this section. Uh, let's go ahead and just really look at everything. Let's go ahead and bring this guy down so we can really look at the whole thing. I'm going to bring all this down so we can see it just for a minute before we break out our own. All right, we'll let that cook, uh, let that finish up rendering. Um, so you, now you can see the highlights happening with this halftone pattern. You can see the midtones happening with this slightly darker halftone pattern. And then you can start to see some of the darker crosshatching pattern, like underneath the ball here and in the, uh, the little area here where it's, well, let's break this down here. Like right in here, you can start to see that halftone pattern come in. But all that combining in a very sort of interesting, creative way to to get to this type of shader. Also, you can move the lights around. Everything is completely interactive. Let's go ahead and grab these. Let's grab our, let's grab our rim light. No, let's grab our key right, and let's break out into a different shot. And we're gonna grab the move key. And I'm just gonna move this highlight around. And you can see how interactive it becomes. It's just like completely interactive. We get our highlights where the light is showing up. We can move that down. It's very interesting, very, very cool. All right, so I promised that we were going to build this from scratch, so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I stripped out the uh, the old, uh, or I took the made a new material, applied it to our our props here. 
Uh, we've got just the standard surface in here right now, and we need to build out this material. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab that utility that we uh, we knew was going to be really crucial to this. So I'm going to hit Control Tab to bring up the search. We're going to type in utility, hit Enter, create our utility. I'm going to put this out to the uh, beauty, and now we are looking at our utility. We need to set this to Lambert mode. All right, cool. So this Lambert is going to be driving everything that we need to create. So we need to create three mats. Like I was saying before, I want a highlight mat, a midtone mat, and a shadow mat. So let's grab another, let's grab a ramp, control tab, ramp, Oop, now float ramp, delete, control tab, ramp, RGB, enter. Okay. So let's throw our utility into this ramp. Great, so now we're just gonna remap these values to this ramp. Let's go ahead and look at the output of this ramp. Now we can sort of clamp into our highlights or where we want our highlights to live. Okay, so I think that's probably pretty good. Maybe clamp them a little bit more. That's good. All right, I'm gonna hold down uh, control and drag off this ramp and make a duplicate. And this is going to be our mid-tone. So put this in there. We're gonna look at the output of this. And now we're going to find where what we want to consider to be our mid-tone. Now this map mat is just going to be uh, good for getting to figuring out where our mid-tone halftone pattern is gonna live. I don't want it to happen on the highlights. So I'm gonna make another knot on this right here. And let's go ahead and make that value up there. Okay, so now it's just a matter of me figuring out exactly where I want these to live. I don't want it to creep into the highlights too much. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm imagining that anywhere it's white, we're gonna have our, our mid-tone, half-tone pattern. And anywhere where it's white, we will not. Let's bring this down a little bit. And then in the shadows, of course, it's going to be non-existent. Okay, so that's gonna be our mid-tone mat. I'm just gonna pull off a copy of our first one and push this into the input. Let's take a look at this output. All right, this is gonna be our shadows. So I know that this one's gonna to wanna to be white and we'll make this one black so that we are making a mat just for the shadowy bits. And let's make it fairly contrasty. And really we wanna just make sure that it's gonna be visible down in here and maybe a little bit, a little bit stronger right in there. That's good. So that's where our crosshatch pattern will be. Okay, so now we've got three mats ready to go. Let's jump back up here, hit down, sh holding down shift. All right, now we can start building out the different parts of this, uh, this half tone so that we can get into the juicy bits of making this shader. So we need to split out another ramp. So I'm gonna make another ramp out, out of this top node. We're just gonna work on the highlights for right now. Okay, so we made a copy of that. So what this ramp is gonna do is actually, this one's gonna control the size of the dots on our highlight. Let's go ahead and look at the output of that. And uh, we don't want it to mimic too closely uh, the mat because um, I don't want the dots to be completely black or sorry, completely small and non-existent. So I'm just gonna drag this out a little bit longer than, than the other one to give make that highlight roll a little bit more. And we're gonna use this to create, uh, we're gonna use this to drive the, the size of our dots on our halftone pattern. <clears throat> Excuse me, so let's grab a, the next thing we're gonna do is range map this. I'm gonna grab range mapper. I'm gonna push this into the range. Boom, okay, so we, got the, we don't even need to look at the output of the range. Uh, the range I'm gonna leave as is, as zero and one for right now, just so it'll be easier for you to tell what's going on. And then we're gonna grab a ramp RGB. And this ramp RGB is gonna be set to circular. And we're gonna change the, uh, we're gonna right click inside of the ramp, boom. And we're gonna change the uh, interpolation of all knots to step. And we're gonna push our, oops, it's kind of sensitive make it about like halfway there. Okay, so now we've just created a circle. If I look at the output of that, of course it's on uh, in the UV space right now. So it's gonna be sort of like weird looking. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this range, which is pulling a value off of our, off of our model here. We're gonna use that range to drive the position of this knot right here. It's gonna make the, uh, the circle either Actually, I think I need to have this uh, flipped, but we'll go ahead and look at that in a minute. So it's gonna drive the position of knot two here. Boink, boink, boink. It's gonna make a really tiny dot or a really big dot, okay? That's where that range comes in because at, in the ramp here, this is considered zero and this is considered one, 
right? And that's what our range is going to give us. Our range is giving us 0 to 1. So if we take this range and we say, all right, I want to drive the position 2 of this ramp. If I output that, it's not going to really look like anything yet because we haven't repeated it and we haven't told it how to wrap onto this or project through the camera yet. So let's do that really quick. Let's grab a UV transform. All right, we're going to pop that in. And we're going to put our ramp right through the pass through of this UV transform. And now, before we do anything, let's go ahead and look at the output of that. We're going to repeat this thing like 100 times. And we'll do like half of it in Y. And you can start to see, we're starting to see something now. Only like I mentioned before, uh, it actually needs to be f inverted. So let's go ahead and invert these colors really quickly here. Whoop. I uh, did not mean to do that. Let's make that white, and this will be black. All right. And uh, let me re yeah, okay. So white and black, and let's go ahead and push this through a camera. So let's go ahead and make sure our camera is in our object manager here. Grab the UV transform. I'm going to push out a projection, camera projection. Good. Push that right into the camera projection color. And let's grab that camera, put it right into the camera slot. Look at the output of that. Good. OK, so um, something is wrong here. I think it's because our ramp, this range does not need to be 0. It needs to be like 0.5. There we go. And let's try, we want it to be a little bit smaller than that. So let's just push this down. Good. I don't want it to, so I don't know if it's really super visible. Let me actually zoom in here. It'd be a little bit easier to see if I get a little closer. All right, so you're probably like, what the heck's going on right now? Okay, so like I mentioned before, this range map here is going to be controlling the position of this knot right here. And if it's at, it's not going to actually work for right now because I'm doing it with the, with the range. But if I take this range and I make it like zero, it actually sort of like flips in on itself. So I probably need to like make it like 0.01 or probably like 0.1. There we go. So this is what's going to be giving us our halftone. So you can see that anywhere where it's sort of white and light, it, we're getting a nice uh, big circle, big dot. And as it falls into shadow, it becomes uh, the size of 0.1. In fact, I probably want to make this a little bit smaller, 0.05, something like that. So uh, in addition to that, uh, if I don't want to make it so big, I could actually change this, ra this uh, range map right here to like 0.85. And that's going to make it a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and bring that down, something like that. So um, that is how we do it. That's how you control the size of the halftone pattern. Pretty cool, right? It's actually a, a really kind of cool thing that Arnold is able to do this. Um, it was definitely took some experimenting. OK, so now that we've got the halftone pattern on the highlight. Maybe we want to repeat it a few more times. Maybe it's like 150. We'll go half of that, so it'll be like 75. All right, now we've got like a good amount going. And again, we're going to use this ramp that we made, the mask, to mask this, this stuff off. So it's going to make sense uh, later on when we build our, our texture. All right, so we've got our halftone pattern happening on our, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, on our highlight. So let's go ahead and start to make our mid-tone uh, halftone pattern. So instead of doing this all over again, what's great is you can just grab all these nodes and just hit hold down control and just drag out a copy. Uh, and then we're just going to take, actually I'll build, I'll take this exact same ramp that we did before. Let's put this out here, input there, and we're going to throw this ramp into input there. Let's go ahead and look at the output of our mid-tone. So now that we've built it once, we don't have to rebuild it again. We just need to use this ramp, which is coming off of our of our uh, utility Lambert, and p figure out exactly uh, where we want our halftone for our mid-tones to start and end. Okay, so let's grab this, make this dark. Cool. So now this is going to be controlling our mid-tone halftones. Uh, let me pull this over a little bit, get it out of the shadow. All right. And this will be uh, the color on this one, on our highlight, is white. And that makes total sense for a highlight. But it's not really going to work for our, uh, our mid-tone. So when we want to adjust that color, we're going to do that in, uh, by adjusting the color of not this ramp, because that's driving our range. But we'll adjust it here once we, build in, once, once we start to get into that. We'll build it right here. In fact, I'll go ahead and uh, 
invert these really quickly here because it is going to be a dark mid-tone and we're going to set that to probably multiply or something and like you know knock it back a little bit okay so that's looking pretty good let's go ahead and uh, move our standard surface over we'll do the same thing for our shadows only our shadows are going to be slightly different so our shadows we're going to try a slightly different approach okay so uh let's grab a ramp let's just copy the ramp for the shadow up there good boom input there. This is going to drive, like I said, the size. So that's looking pretty good. I might actually expand this out a little bit. It feels good. Okay. So this one, I don't want to do, I don't want to do a, uh, uh, this kind of halftone pattern here. I want to do a crosshatch pattern. So how could we do that? Well, right now we're using a, uh, a circle note, a circle ramp, but we could just as easily use like a U, a U ramp or we could use uh, a V and then we could adjust. We can see right now it's actually changing the size of that, of that line over uh, the shading here. So it's using, it's using this same range that we built before to drive that position two of that ramp, which in turn gives us this look. But um, it's probably gonna be too, uh, too wide. So let's go a little bit skinnier. That feels pretty good. And now I'm just going to adjust in the UV transform how many times that's repeated. So if I repeat it in X, it's not really gonna do anything. I really want to repeat it in Y. So let's do like maybe 150. That feels pretty good. And I feel like it may need to be a bit wider. So I'm gonna bring this back up to 0.6 on the output max of that range, just gonna make it a, a thicker line. And now I wanna rotate it. Uh, I noticed in my reference, some of that crosshatch pattern, it's kinda hard to see, is like rotated like at 45 degrees. So I'm gonna grab down in my UV transform of that, hit 45. Actually, I'm gonna go negative 45. I'm gonna kinda go up the other way. That's good, that's what I was after. I've got fairly uh, low quality settings on in terms of my render settings so they go faster, but that will all clean up with samples. Cool. So now if we look at the output of everything that we've got going here, let's grab the highlight. So we've got a highlight that we've got. And let's go ahead and grab our render region over that area. And we've got our mid-tone. And then we've got our shadow. It's all looking good, right? So now we just need to put all of these pieces together, and then we're going to put it into the shader uh, to get the final touches. So let's grab a layer RGB, layer RGBA. And we're going to push, uh, we need to figure out what this is going to be. So let's go ahead and grab our, um, let's make a red color at the very bottom layer one, we'll put, make, make it red, sort of like a, a darker red maybe. And then we will put our spider webbing on here, which will be a mask that'll mask out layer two. Uh, so let's grab that from our other shader. It's right here. So let's just grab Control C, Control V. All right. So we'll grab that guy and we're going to push him into layer two mix. And for layer two, we're going to add, let's put in black is probably fine. We'll set this to multiply uh, mix layer two. Why are you not working? Oh, that was layer four. I meant to put layer two. Let's just drag this up, give, my, give ourselves a little bit more room here, get kind of cramped. Uh, let's grab multiply, cool. All right, so we do need to change the UVs on that. So let's go under layer, let's unhide our, oh, it's already there, okay, cool. So we'll grab our inner ball and we're gonna change this UV to flat. And that one's gonna be a little bit too small. So let's make it bigger, something like, and here is pretty good. All right, we'll grab our shader ball and we'll do the same thing on this one, flat, and let's rotate it. I'm gonna hold down shift for snapping. Let's go 90 degrees, cool. And let's scale this up. Okay, so um, we've got that all set up now. And uh, we need to start adding in our different shading uh, layers. So let's start with the shadow first. And I'll leave the shadow. It's going to go on to layer three. And really, uh, we just need to put in our, our layer. Oh, it's our shadow layers right here. So we're going to put this into layer three 
oops, wrong one. Uh, layer three, where's that going? Into the input, and let's go ahead and move over, and let's bring our shad, our, our mats over a little bit more, because they don't make a lot of sense sitting way out there. All right, I'm gonna zoom in, make this a little bit easier on myself. All right, let's grab our mat. We're gonna throw that into layer three mix, and make sure layer three is gonna be set to multiply. All right, so now we've got our our shadow pass kind of in there, and we can, of course, we can adjust how heavy the, this is going in. Uh, we can do that a couple different ways. We could actually adjust the mask and make this not quite as um, bright, which is then gonna mix down that shadow, but I'm gonna leave it full right now just so we can see it a little bit easier. All right, let's do the same thing with our midtones. We're gonna have to throw our midtones onto what's gonna be layer uh, four input, and let's grab that mask and drag that over. All right, so this is going to go into layer four mix. Great, grab that. That's also going to be uh, multiply. Only this time, it, it's you. You definitely just don't really want to see this very heavily. I noticed in in the movie, any of the midtone, uh, half tone patterns were very subtle, very very subtle. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, white here, and I'm just going to drag it down into like a gray. I just want to feel it. I don't necessarily want to see it very much. And the mask, I feel like, needs to bleed off into the shadows a bit more. That's good. And now I'm just going to, I, I don't like how the halftone pattern is sort of like getting too too big right in here. So the way that I'm going to fix that is going into the, um, the mid-tone range here and making sure that it doesn't get that big. There we go. That's better. And the size going up is fine. I, I like that. That's feeling pretty good. All right, now we're going to do the highlight. And the highlight is going to be fairly simple. We're just going to grab the highlight, bring that into layer 5 input. Let's go ahead and make sure the layer 5 input is set to plus. All right, so layer 5 is there. And we could, I'm still going to use the layer 5 mask because, you know, we don't like these little tiny, tiny dots that are happening over here. So we'll bring that mask over and we'll bring that mask right into the layer, was that layer five mix, right? Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna drag this up so I can see it a little bit easier. All right, cool. So uh, now, again, that highlight, the dots are getting a bit too big. If we look at our reference with, uh, with Kingpin, they're, they don't ever get that big. So let's grab that range and we're gonna adjust that down to maybe like 0.6 maybe even a little bit less than that, maybe 0.5. There we go. And then I feel like we need to repeat these. It's like a little bit too big. So let's go back into our camera, or our, sorry, our UV transform and change that to like 200 by 100. Oops, not 1200. That's it's an actual, a kind of an interesting look by just repeating it that way. All right, there we go. That's feeling pretty good. So let's take a step back, I'll take a moment here to look at what we've got. Um, let's go ahead and just regionize this whole thing. Um, we've got our mid-tone pattern, we've got our shadow pattern, and we've got our highlight pattern. And we're basically building the, the, the building blocks of our diffuse map, which is kind of great using this method. Um, I did add a, I think it was a knocky noise. Let's go ahead and look at what, what, what it was. I think it was... Uh, it was a Luca noise. Okay, so if we wanted to add like a Luca noise, let's go ahead and do that. I'll just type Luca. <laughs> All right, let's grab the C40 noise. We're going to change this to Luca. This node lives on the seventh floor. Uh, sorry, had to do it. Uh, let's do like 200. Uh, no, 200, not 20. There we go. All right, so this is just going to break up that texture a little bit. We're going to throw this into input six. And we'll set the input six to do 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 and make this overlay. All right, let's go ahead and look at the output of that. All right, it's way too heavy, but bring this down a little bit. It starts to feel a little bit cool and broken up. And yeah, something simple, maybe even a multiply might look better. Let's see what the multiply looks like. Bring that back up a little bit. Yeah, I kind of dig the multiply a little bit better. In fact, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna make this a little bit more contrasty. 
Yeah, so it's just adding a little subtle, almost like paint strokes, kind of feels like more painterly. All right, so we've got the building blocks here. Now it's time to pipe it back into our standard surface into the diffuse slot. So we'll go ahead and throw this into our standard surface, base color, make sure that the base weight is all the way up. And let's go ahead and look at the output of that. It's very shiny. We have like a, a very hot specular, which is not in line with what's happening in the film. Uh, they've all got pretty diffuse uh, reflections and I'm gonna bring the, the um, overall sort of weight of that down, good. And now I feel like the, um, it's really close, but the, the red is just way, way, way too dark. So let's go back into our base, our layer shader rather, and just brighten up our red. And let's go ahead and take a look at why. I think it might be this, uh, might be this multiply layer that we've got going on. Uh, let me turn this one off. Yeah, it's this guy right here. So I'm gonna actually change that, that sort of uh, weird layer that I had on here before back to an overlay and just bring it way down like that just so we can barely start to feel it. All right, cool. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. It's gonna be really hard to see our shading, but I just wanna be able to see it a little bit bigger. All right, that's looking pretty good. Our mid-tone pattern I think is too big. We're gonna change that in a second. Um, our halftone pattern is great, but it's a bit too heavy handed. I think I want to knock it down a little bit in terms of its opacity. So let's make those adjustments really quickly here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back to zero. And I'm just going to walk over to our midtone and adjust its mask. Um, the ma oh, actually, I want to adjust the size. So I'm going to do that with the range. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller, 0.4, something like that. Actually, maybe it's not the size, maybe it's the re the repeating. It needs to be repeated more, which is I'm gonna do that through the UV transform. And I think I'm gonna mimic what I did on the highlight, which is 100, or sorry, 200 and 100. Yeah, that's feeling better to me. And now I just wanna knock down the opacity of the shadow. So I'm gonna do that with the with the mask right here. And just find a nice, I don't want it to be so dark that it's distracting. Let's see how that looks down here. That looks pretty good. I love how it's like, I just, it just looks sort of like printed. It's really got a great look. And the fact that, the fact that you can do this with nothing but UV transforms and projections and ramps and Arnold is really cool. I wish you had this sort of ability in some of the other renderers. Um, but, you know, maybe someday. And if we wanted to add even more um, imperfection to this uh, to this red and whatnot, you could like go shoot or scan in like some paint strokes that you make maybe another program or maybe just in real life and like bring them in and add them to this to make it even feel more realistic. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Let's go ahead and like uh, knock this out like full like this and we're gonna turn off our region and let this cook for a second while we talk about what we've got going on. All right, so I hope you liked the video. Um, it was a lot of fun to make, a lot of fun to experiment with this type of, of look. And uh, I hope you can go off and experiment with your own Spider-Verse shaders, because I don't know about you, but that movie really inspired me. It just, I was so excited to come home and like try to build this kind of shader. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So um, yeah, if you liked the video, uh, hit me with a like. If you have any questions about what I did here, uh, go ahead and ask in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to answer. If you need um, any help creating this or remembering anything I've done, hit me up if you're in our, our GSG Connect Slack. I'm always in there answering questions. So yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, welcome back everybody. Hope you liked that video. I had a lot of fun making that shader and sort of diving into the different levels of halftone and it was just a lot of fun to like, figure out a way to make it. And if you haven't seen Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, I highly recommend checking that movie out. It will definitely inspire you to go home and start making some cool stuff. So anyway, um, give me an old uh, thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you really liked it. And I will see you in the next video.